If it was up to me, NFL would be outlawed. If it was up to me, would be no more NBA because it's not benefiting the black community. You don't marry black women. You don't live in the black community. You don't hire black people. I mean, what good is the NFL and the NBA? What good is it? You drive around the neighborhood 50 times so everybody can see you got a bench, you got signed, and you don't come back to help nobody get where you at. See, we got a problem in the black community where most of our sons are going to be football players. Or so they think. They're going to be basketball players. Or so they think. And unfortunately, we reinforce sports and entertainment above academics and professional achievement. That's right. That's right. I know it for a fact. I know it for a fact. If I go to any one of these schools, I bet you the best football player got pictures all over the place. Probably flunk in every class. But he can shoot that ball. He can catch that ball. And then all the kids making A's and B's, you don't even know their name. That's right. Because the black community socializes its men for physical exploitation by white corporations. Let me say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. The black community socializes its boys so they can be physically exploited by white commercial capitalism. In other words, your house is a slave pen. You raise slaves. And when they old enough and big enough and strong enough, you take them out to be sold on the auction. But you don't take them to the white man with the whip no more. You take them to the white man holding the football. You take them to the white man holding the basketball. That's right. The NFL operates just like the slave auction. What they call it? The lottery. There ain't no damn lottery. That's the auction. Which one of these niggers you want? He's seven foot one. 300 pounds, he's a Wake Forest nigga. Which one you want? We got Zion Williams, 280, baby Charles Barkley from the Blue Devils. How much you want for him? Y'all heard what happened to LeBron James last week, and I like LeBron, by the way. He speak up more than Mike and Kobe put together, so I gotta respect that. LeBron James said he's gonna give Anthony Davis number 23. LeBron said, brother, I'm going to give you your number. We both can't wear it. To show solidarity, I'm going to give my young brother number 23. Nike called him up yesterday. See, we talk about the auction block. Because y'all think Negroes with money got power. You're dead wrong. You're dead wrong if you think a Negro with money got power. Nike told LeBron, uh, who gave you permission? Go on the internet and look it up. Who gave you permission to give away that number we branded on your back? Nike told LeBron, you cannot give that number away because we have invested too much in you and too much in it. So now Anthony Davis is just going to be number three instead of 23. Wow. Rich blacks are not powerful. Rich blacks are scared. You know why? Because they recognize how the system operates and they know it ain't fair. And because most of them are more in love with being famous than helping free you, they'll do whatever they got to do in order to stay in the good graces of their slave master. But guess what? You can do it all. And when they decide they done with you, they done with you. You don't believe me? Come on down to Philadelphia. Let's go talk to Bill Cosby. Look what they did to Bill Cosby. The number one black television star, America's dad. I mean, this is the man who paved the way for Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby. This is a black man who made white folks laugh for a living. Jello, Puddin' Pops, Fat Albert. 
But Bill Cosby forgot the golden rule. We will make you rich. We will give you money. But don't you ever think for one minute that we will ever forget that you are black. And Bill Cosby took concert with white females. Like a lot of you brothers do, but I ain't gonna get into that today. That's another conversation. All right? No disrespect to our white visitors at all. But Bill Cosby wanted to buy a major network. Remember they killed his son about 20 years ago when he tried to buy a major network before. They said, nah, brother, we don't give black people TV stations. We'll give you a show. You could do Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We give you Martin. We'll give you Housewives of Atlanta. But we ain't giving you no network. We don't let black folks get no network. Nah, we don't do that. Bill Cosby said, I'm gonna get me a network. Killed his son on the side of the room, fixing the flat. Bill Cosby comes back around, says, nah, I'm getting old. I got to do this before I die. I want to be the first black man to say he owned a major network. The Oprah Winfrey network is not a major. In fact, Oprah Winfrey was losing, what, a million dollars a day? She called Tyler Perry to come do some Medea shows and save him. Because y'all love to see black men in skirts. Medea work every time. Somebody asked Tyler Perry, can you please do something other than Medea? And Tyler Perry said, why? They gonna buy them tickets? Because black folks love to see black men in skirts. That's another conversation. So Tyler Perry is helping Oprah Winfrey stabilize her network because when she left the majors and started the Oprah Winfrey network and had a nerve to call it OWN OWN. I own my own. No white folks said, oh hell no you don't. And they started sabotaging Oprah. And we could have saved Oprah, but Oprah, like all rich blacks know, the number one sin that a rich black can commit is to accuse white folks of racism. So Oprah would not dare say that the other white networks are sabotaging me because that would have messed her relation because rich blacks are not allowed to recognize racism. So Oprah had to keep it to herself and go get Tyler Perry to do some Medea shows to save her network. So Bill Cosby tried to buy that network and he started taking concert with white women and the power structure called up those white women. 40 white women, all at the same time. How in the hell can 40 white women at the same time come forward and say he harassed me. Now don't get me wrong, I don't trivialize sexual violence. Especially not because black women are most likely to suffer it. One out of every four black women will be molested or raped in her life. And guess what? The perpetrator will almost never be convicted and held accountable. So we don't trivialize sexual violence. But I'm gonna tell you what I will trivialize. Bill Cosby, the number one black TV star in the world, sexually harasses you, not in, not in 2018, not in 2008, not 1998, not 1988, not even 1978. He harassed you in 1974, 45 years ago. And you waited 45 years to tell the world that the number one black TV star at that time harassed you. What black man in here thinks that a white woman gonna wait 45 years to tell on you? And then when Bill Cosby was convicted, what was so sad, I read the record, I didn't even know, because this is how the media lies. I thought Bill Cosby actually He didn't. He was convicted for the same thing Tupac was convicted for, illegal touching and massaging. Mm. There was no intercourse, mm. none. Don't get me wrong, touching a woman's person is still a major violation. Don't get me wrong, but don't call that if all he did was touch her. And then they said, well, he provided pills. Excuse me, do you know anything about Hollywood? 
Everybody does pills in sex. That's what you do in Hollywood. What you making Bill Cosby special for? I know some brothers in the prison with Bill Cosby. You know he legally blind, y'all. It take two guards. He gotta go to the bathroom with two guards. He gotta go eat with two guards. He gotta go out in the yard with two guards. Two guards gotta help him undress and get dressed. He can't even see, y'all. Bill Cosby, one of our top black entertainers, reduced to nothing because being famous doesn't mean you got power. Now some of you might say, well, how can I be famous and powerful, Doc? Real simple. You have to be a self-made man or woman. Bill Cosby worked hard, but everything he got, he got, he got through the white entertainment system. LeBron James worked hard, but everything he got, he got through the white athletic system. See, the difference is whether you made yourself independently or whether they made you. Because if they made you, they will control you. They can break you. If it was up to me, NFL would be outlawed. If it was up to me, would be no more NBA because it's not benefiting the black community. You don't marry black women. You don't live in the black community. You don't hire black people. I mean, what good is the NFL and the NBA? What good is it? You drive around the neighborhood 50 times so everybody can see you got a bench, you got signed, and you don't come back to help nobody get where you at. Now let's get back to the education. 